We don't want it to be like this, like when you, you know, when you put something in a pan and it goes, that's not a good sound. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Giusti. In the past, I had the opportunity to work at a lot of really cool Michelin star restaurants around the world. These days, I spend most of my time trying to figure out how to make delicious and great food on a budget, which is what we'll be doing today. Today, I've been challenged to cook four super simple recipes using canned seafood. Yeah, that's it, there we go. We're gonna make a breakfast, a lunch, a, yeah. We're gonna be making a breakfast, a lunch, a snack, and a dinner, all for less than $3 a recipe. I wanted to do an episode about canned seafood because it's a really underutilized and underestimated ingredient. Some people might think that canned seafood isn't as good for you as fresh seafood, but in fact, it has the same nutritional content in most cases. Beyond that, it's shelf stable and it's also very cheap. I'm gonna show you some different techniques using canned seafood that will lead to a variety of delicious meals. So let's get this thing started with breakfast. I decided to make a frittata featuring canned salmon. So the reason we're using salmon in this preparation is because it goes really well with eggs, it goes really well with potatoes. In this case, it is wild salmon, which is really cool too because it's shelf stable and we can use it any time of the year. Whereas wild salmon that's fresh is only available during certain times of the year. It's already cooked as well, which makes it an even simpler preparation. We're gonna put a few Yukon Gold potatoes, some chopped chives, some chopped shallot, and a little bit of sour cream on top. We're gonna put a touch of oil in here. I have this on medium heat. We're gonna start with our Yukon Gold potatoes. We're keeping the peel on. The peel on a potato is really delicious, it's very nutritious. In this case, it will actually promote kind of the crisping of the potato, which is nice as well. And these are raw potatoes, so we don't wanna like crush them with heat because they will burn on the outside before they're cooked in the inside. We want a nice sizzle. So while this cooks, I'm gonna cut my shallot. So I'm just gonna cut them in thirds lengthwise. And then again, just like this. All right, so we got a little juice going on the potatoes right now, a little color coming with the color. There's a little bit of steam, a little bit of heat coming off. So the hoods, the ventilation hoods have come on here. So it is a little loud. I'm gonna lower the heat a touch. We're gonna go ahead and add the shallots. We're just seasoning this with salt and pepper. If you just season at the very end, you're more likely to over season something. Potatoes are nice and crispy. The heat's low, the shallots are starting to soften. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the eggs and the sour cream. We're just gonna crack the four eggs into a bowl. I'm gonna use a fork to whip them up. Before we go ahead and add the egg, we're gonna add the salmon. Uh, you'll notice that the flavor is very delicious and pretty mild, to be completely honest with you. This particular salmon is packed in water, but we don't want this water. We're gonna drain the water off. So using a fork, we're just gonna kind of break it off into here. We don't want this to sit in here that long now. This, this salmon is cooked. We just wanna get it spread, incorporated evenly before we add the egg. When we put the egg in, we don't want it to be super hot, but we want there to be some heat. Once the egg's in, we're gonna go ahead and season it again. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of chopped chives in here. We're gonna put dollops of sour cream directly on top. The sour cream on top is gonna kind of caramelize and dry in a little bit. And the inside of the sour cream is gonna kind of stay a little gooey. So when you're eating it, you get this like pocket of creaminess. I'll put maybe one more. And that's it. We've preheated our broiler in the oven to 400 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and put this in maybe four inches below the broiler. And we're gonna cook this probably towards 10 minutes just to get it brown on top and set underneath. Frittata's done. You can go ahead and cut this thing right in here and you know scoop it out, or you can slide the whole thing out and cut it. It's probably easier to do that. And what you'll notice is the sour cream is kind of like dried in on the outside, so it becomes a little more firm. But once you cut into it, you'll see that it's still pretty gooey. For what it's worth, we put four eggs in this. We put one can of salmon, a few potatoes. That's hearty. Everything combined, again, makes for a very hearty breakfast. When you eat this, you're gonna be pretty full. It's very substantial. Again, less than $2 a serving. Pretty cool recipe. All right, let's give it a shot. Best part of cooking, tasting. Mmm. It's delicious. I will say I got a, a big bite there of sour cream, which is nice. It's nice to have them spread out because sometimes you won't get in, sometimes you do it. My first bite there was a little bit of sour cream with a big chunk of salmon and roasted potato and egg. It was delicious. So there you have it, salmon frittata featuring canned salmon, $7.55 for four servings, which comes out to $1.89 per serving. All right, now it's time to make lunch featuring canned sardines. And in this case, we're making this delicious salad with roasted vegetables, a light vinaigrette, and we're just gonna kind of add the sardines to add a savoriness. Sardines 
are super nutritious, they're super delicious, they're super savory. They're also fish that are very difficult, sometimes almost impossible to find fresh. So buying a can of sardines is actually a pretty cool way to take your cooking to another step. All of the canned seafood items are packed in something. You can find sardines packed in oil, you can find sardines packed in water. These are sardines packed in oil. They do cost a little more, but that oil becomes very savory and very flavorful. So we're not gonna get rid of it. We're actually gonna use it to dress the vegetables which we will roast and put on the salad. So between the actual pieces of sardine and the vegetables roasted in sardine oil, we're really gonna get this nice savoriness throughout the salad without having to use more than one can for four portions. So we're gonna get right into it here. Uh, we have our vegetables. We're gonna cut the Roma tomatoes here into quarters. So we're gonna cut our onion. I'm gonna cut it into thirds lengthwise and then just once this way. This onion's pretty big, so we're gonna stick with one half onion here. We're taking four cloves of whole garlic. These have just been peeled, nothing else has been done to them. Then we have chickpeas, this is one can of chickpeas. We did drain off the liquid from inside that can. That liquid is actually what the chickpeas are cooked in. It's referred to as aquafaba, and aquafaba actually has stabilizing properties. We're gonna use this liquid to make our dressing today. So it's time to finish off our vegetables here. We wanna dress them. We're gonna be using the oil from the sardine cans. These are like full, beautiful fillets. We're gonna put some oregano in here. We're gonna add a little salt. We add a little fresh cracked black pepper, and we're gonna add just a touch of olive oil. What the oil does is it conducts the heat as to be able to roast those things as opposed to steaming them. We're just gonna get a quick mix, and then we're gonna go ahead, pour this out onto this tray. We want things to be kind of in an even layer. If they're piled on top of each other, they won't roast again, they will steam. So we'll go ahead and put this in the oven now. Probably gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of 400 degrees, 425 degrees. All right, so vegetables are roasted. I should say vegetables and chickpeas are roasted. It smells delicious. We're gonna add the sardines to the tray now because they're already cooked. To be completely honest, it's gonna be very rare to go anywhere and find a fresh sardine that's gonna look this intact. A lot of them get really beat up in, in the shipping process. One thing about canned fish in particular, we're talking about canned seafood, but canned fish like a sardine or even an anchovy is the bones are still in here. The bones dissolve pretty much, but you might taste a little bit of a bone, nothing to be worried about. They just kind of break up in your mouth when you eat them. These are beautiful and they're in huge chunks and we're gonna keep them in big chunks. And you might say to yourself, okay, this isn't a lot of sardines for a salad for four people for lunch. And these are pretty intense, okay? This salad in itself is very hearty. We have a lot of other ingredients going on here and we're using the sardines to really accent the flavor of everything else. And once we finish spreading these out nice, we're gonna put these back into the oven for about five minutes, same hot oven. They'll cook a bit with the other ingredients that we're gonna put on the salad and then we'll be ready to go. While that's happening, we're gonna go ahead and, and get the rest of the salad ready. So we have some hearts of romaine. We're gonna just take off the very tip, the very core, we're not gonna use that. I'm gonna take these leaves together and basically cut them in half lengthwise. So we have our roasted vegetables with the sardines on it. You can really smell it now, it's delicious. Like makes you salivate. Uh, so we're ready to start the vinaigrette. And the reason we kind of had to wait for this to come out is because we're gonna take the garlic cloves that were roasted as kind of the base to this dressing. So we have a little bit of Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard also aids not only in flavor but in the emulsification of a dressing like this. We're gonna add some red wine vinegar. You can use your vinegar of choice. I particularly like red wine vinegar. There are other vinegars that are a little more toned down. I like that acidity. We're gonna be adding aquafaba to help the emulsification. So the aquafaba is the cooking liquid of the chickpeas. So they take on a lot of starch and in this case help the emulsification. We're gonna add some water to this as well. We're using a blender here instead of say whisking it because we have these garlic cloves. These garlic cloves need to be processed in some way. If you did not have a blender, you could take those garlic cloves, they're soft. You could smash them on a cutting board into a paste very easily with a knife, add them to this mixture, and ultimately make the same vinaigrette using a whisk. We're gonna go ahead and blend the base here. Once we form the base, we are gonna start to drizzle in the oil. In this case, we decided to use straight vegetable oil. All right, so the vinaigrette's blended. We're gonna go ahead and pour it out. Again, fresh cracked black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this and then taste it. I'm happy with this. You taste the garlic, you taste the vinegar, you taste the mustard, and it's creamy, that's what we want. So we're ready to plate the salad. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plate one big salad with all four portions together. I happen to have the biggest bowl ever made. You might have a bowl like this at home, probably not, but again, you don't need a bowl like this to do this. So romaine in, 
I put a little bit of dressing on first. You don't want to overdress salads. So I'm using a giant bowl and giant tongs. I'm going to put a bottom layer of lettuce in here. Once I get one layer of lettuce in, I'm going to start layering in some of the other ingredients. I have a few layers of stuff. I'm going to add more lettuce. It's nice that every bite you take, you taste something a little different. So trying to spread these things out as much as possible. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper on top of this as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and give this a taste. To do that, I'm just going to take uh, a few leaves and some of the garnish and put it in a small bowl uh, so I'm not just eating out of this gigantic bowl by myself. Try to get a few bites with lettuce, the sardines, some tomatoes. Mm. Eating the sardines and the roasted tomato at the same time with the vinaigrette is like this super savory blast. It's awesome. The chickpeas roasted with the sardine oil on them actually tastes like roasted chicken, even in texture, not just in flavor. And that sardine salad, four servings for $10.50, coming to $2.62 a serving. All right, so we ate lunch. We're kind of hanging out. We have a few hours until dinner's ready. We're hungry, so we're gonna make a snack now. What will we be making? Clams Casino, or should I say a Clams Casino toast. Clams Casino is a great dish. Essentially, it's clams, breadcrumbs, herbs, peppers, onions, and bacon put into the half shell of a clam and broiled. Great dish, but it can be a lot, a lot, a lot of work. This is a little riff on the dish. We're making it on a toast instead of actually on the half shell, and we're using the chopped clams instead. So overall, we get this really cool, kind of innovative way to eat a classic dish, and it happens to be that much easier and pretty cheap as well. So there are a lot of advantages of using canned clams. When you buy clams, fresh clams at the supermarket, they do come in the shell and they don't yield much. Oftentimes when you buy fresh clams at the supermarket, many of them are dead. You have to check to see if they're dead. If they are dead, you shouldn't cook them. So your yield goes down, but it's also a little bit of an extra step. Then if you're making a dish like Clams Casino, where you're going to serve a clam on the half shell with other things, you need to cook the clams, you need to let the clams cool, you need to open the clams, you need to remove the clam, the cooked clam itself, and then put it back in the shell. These clams have been cooked. In this case, they are chopped. So they are already processed and ready to go. They're sitting in clam juice. They tend to be extremely flavorful and they're very cheap as well. So to get things going, we have some butter in a bowl here. We have a couple ounces of bacon. So this is two slices. We're gonna go ahead and cut the bacon. We're gonna go right into this bowl with butter. We're gonna put some onions in there as well. So we have our onion cut. We're gonna put it to the side. So I have a whole clove of garlic. It's just gonna go in here, super easy. Now this is actually gonna go in the microwave. If I'm blinking a lot, it's because I can't see because of the onions. So like canned fish, people seem to be down on the microwave as a great tool to use. I think people associate using a microwave with low quality or convenience. Well, it is convenient, but just because something is convenient does not make it bad. In this case, we're gonna be able to cook the bacon, melt the butter as we need to, and actually even soften the garlic in the microwave very easily using the bowl that we're gonna mix everything else in. We don't need to dirty a pot and it works perfectly to do the job. So when you cook in the microwave, if you put something in there for two minutes, three minutes straight, I think this thing would explode. So what we do is we put it in for a minute, literally let it take a second and put it in for another minute and then we'll be good to go. All right, so the bacon's out now. The bacon's halfway cooked. There is a clove of garlic in here, which is now softened. I'm going to actually remove that clove of garlic now. Onions in. Then I'm just gonna mix them around to incorporate them into the butter. Now I have this garlic clove. I'm just gonna kind of cut it up a little bit like this, add this into our mixture. So we're gonna go ahead and open these now. We need a can opener for this. Could be the hardest thing of the day here, opening up the can of clams. I will say that the clam juice that's particularly in these chopped clams is pretty intense. When we use sardines, we use the oil, the oil was delicious. Using canned salmon, the water that's in the canned salmon, maybe not so delicious. The liquid in these chopped clams, I think you could kind of go either way. It's not all the same from canned seafood to canned seafood. So I'm just gonna drain these. These clams have been chopped already, so these can go right into our mixture here. This is a bunch of parsley. It's been washed. So I just put the whole bunch together like this. Instead of picking leaves and messing around, I cut the whole thing. Not only are parsley stems okay to use, they're actually delicious. And in a toast like this, we're gonna have all these different textures on top of the bread. It's a very nice addition. When you cut kind of daintier leaves like basil, you don't wanna chop them too much. They will oxidize and turn brown. We don't want that. And then I'm just gonna turn these one way and just do it one more time. So basil goes right in, mix it around a bit, help it cool down. We're gonna go ahead and add the cheese. 
We have the trusty microplane. Microplane, a great tool. It's essentially a cheese grater on a stick. It's not too much, a couple tablespoons worth of grated cheese. We want to taste the clam. There is, a, there is a thing where you could put a lot of salt in here, and it might not be salty, but it starts to detract away from the flavor of the clam itself. So we're just gonna put a touch of salt. This dish, I think, can demand a lot of black pepper. So now that this is all mixed, we're gonna pop into the fridge for two minutes just so the butter cools down a little bit so it's more of a paste and makes it easy to slather on our baguette. Just took the mix out of the fridge. The butter is set up a bit more so it's cooled down. This is gonna make it a lot easier to spread on our baguette. This is a half a baguette. We're gonna cut it down the middle as even as possible, like that. So we have two even halves, nice. So a tray with a rack. Why we want this is because the air will go underneath. If you don't have a rack, it's not the end of the world. Okay, you can put it directly on the tray, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and use a spoon for this. And essentially we're gonna try to evenly distribute the mix onto these two pieces of bread. I want it to go all the way to the edges because we're gonna put this under the broiler and any piece of bread that's exposed and not covered with the mix, it's gonna be directly under that heat. It's gonna really toast. Your bacon's only halfway cooked here. Your onions are not really cooked. Everything's gonna kind of finish cooking in the broiler now. Broiler's set to 400 degrees. We do wanna get it nice and crispy. All right, so we got our toast, our casino slabs. Got a little lemon. And just squeeze it. We just wanna give it a nice little brightness with lemon juice. And this would be like a portion size for a snack. I mean, it's a pretty, Pretty good snack. I mean, if you're hungry, you could probably crush two of these slabs by yourself. There you have it. We have a great snack until we're ready for dinner. All right, it's time to taste. Oh, you heard it. It's so good. You have this really nice toast crispy outside, and then the inside is nice and soft and warm, and the flavor is crazy. I mean, you got bacon fat, you got butter, you got garlic, you have basil, you have clams. This is a winner. And there you have Clams Casino Toast. Four servings for $6.79, coming to $1.70 a serving. We're not quite hungry yet because we crushed two of those clam casino slabs, but we need to make dinner. So we're gonna make a chowder. We're gonna utilize canned tuna. Call it what you wanna call it. Call it a soup, call it a chowder, call it pasta fagioli, whatever you wanna call it. I'm calling it a chowder and that's what we're going with. And tuna, for what it's worth, in the family of canned seafood, is really the most accessible in terms of flavor. It has a nice, mild seafood flavor that will kind of permeate through the chowder, but it's not gonna overpower it. So you have a product here that's already ready to go, and it has a very distinct texture that makes it appropriate for certain things. So it is a very different product, and of course, again, it is much cheaper than its fresh counterpart. So we're gonna go ahead and chop some onion. I'm gonna put uh, a little bit of olive oil in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the onions. We have garlic cloves, we have three, we're gonna slice them thin. Salt will bring out some water from these things, and that will actually promote the sweating of these items because they'll steam more than they're gonna caramelize. We don't want them to brown, so adding a little salt kind of promotes this. We have chili flakes. We're gonna add a little spice to our chowder here. So once these onions go a little further, we're gonna go ahead and add the tomatoes in their liquid. We're gonna add the canned corn, then water. Slowly pour that in. We're gonna go ahead now and add our chopped spinach. This is actually one box that would you, you would get from the freezer section. So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on just to kind of get this going a bit faster. We wanna bring it to a boil or a simmer, I should say a light simmer so we can put our pasta in to cook the pasta. It's gonna cook directly in the soup. All right, I can hear, we got, a, we got a boil going here, a little bit of a simmer. So I'm gonna take the lid off. Got a good simmer going. We are using ditalini for this. When you're serving a soup that has this size piece of corn, this size piece of tomato, these size chunks of, of tuna, we want a pasta that's the same size. You're gonna be eating this with a spoon. You don't want a piece of pasta that's really, really tiny or really, really large. So we're adding salt. We're gonna add a little black pepper in here as well. Always tasting things. I think one thing that a lot of home cooks don't do is taste the food enough. You should be tasting it all the time. So we'll go ahead and give it a taste. Now we get some nice seasoning in here. We're gonna leave it there. We'll season it at the end. This is like four or five leaves of basil. No need to chop them. They're gonna contribute to the flavor while the pasta cooks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drain this tuna. Well, I'm gonna open it up first carefully. We don't wanna use this water. It's kind of like murky seafood water. You see the tuna's in like nice flakes, making sure these chunks are what we want. We're gonna go ahead and chop the parsley and add our parsley. So we go ahead and add the tuna. So we're gonna add some more salt. We're gonna add some pepper. And now we're gonna mix it gently. We're trying to keep the tuna in large chunks. I've turned the pot off at this point. 
this tuna is cooked and it will warm through based on the residual heat. This thing is like screaming hot right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and serve it up. You're gonna see that the liquid comes up basically flush with the garnish inside and that's really what we're looking for. We're gonna finish it with a touch of olive oil. And here we have a delicious, hearty, non-traditional tuna chowder. Try to get a little bit of everything. Mm. When you eat something like this, it's so savory, it's so satisfying in the sense that, you know, you have this tuna, you have these vegetables, it's hot. You taste a little bit of the heat from the chili, but it's a broth, it's broth based. And again, we use water for this. You know, there's no chicken stock, there's no beef broth, there's no dairy in this. So it's really clean tasting as well and very light and refreshing almost, as, as much as that might sound odd because it's hot, but it really is. Even when you look at it, you'd think that you had this kind of summer bounty in a, in a pot, but everything came from the can or the freezer section. And it's crazy to think that if you serve this to someone right now, they would never know how you actually made this. And there you have the tuna chowder, four servings for $9.60, coming to $2.40 a serving. Most people don't usually associate canned seafood with delicious meals, but I think we very clearly proved today that there's a lot of ways that you can use them to not only make delicious meals at home, but meals that are easy and affordable as well. Today we made a breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner, all using canned seafood that you can find at your local supermarket. These meals are delicious, they're affordable, and I'm pretty sure you'll have no problem making them at home.